As someone who shares prophetic words, I don't claim to get everything right every single time, and sometimes I have a lot more confirmation about specific words than other times. I am not jumping on here claiming to get everything right every single time, and the reason is because I'm still human, and I am not perfect at hearing from God, and also, even when I hear very clearly and accurately, I'm not perfect at sharing it and interpreting what I've heard. And that's just the nature of prof prophecy. The New Testament talks about how we see in part and we prophesy in part. Anything I share or any other prophetic person shares, take it to the Holy Spirit and pray about it, you know, because people with a prophetic gift are not perfect. You can confirm that something is either from God or the Holy Spirit can say, hey, they missed God on this one, you know, if they did, or they've got this right, but this detail here I want you to ignore. I really encourage you, um, not to just take my word for it uh, when, when I'm saying this. I encourage you personally to go to the Holy Spirit, to go to God's word, and to say, God, what are you saying to me about this? If a person claims to be a prophet, and we won't even deal with whether there are prophets today, but giving them the benefit of the doubt, they say that they are a prophet. So we should be able to test and see if they are actual prophets. But what he said in the intro was that a prophet is not going to be perfect. That's just the nature of prophecy. Well, that's not true. As a matter of fact, that's not only not true, it's unbiblical, it is ungodly, it is false. And it leads people astray. And the Bible tells us what should happen, at least in the Old Testament, what should happen to a prophet who presumes to speak for the Lord and does so incorrectly. So let's go to Deuteronomy 18, you all have heard this passage before, but the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And so he even equates this person in the same lineage, the same line as a person who speaks on behalf of Muhammad, a person who speaks on the same line of uh, Hinduism or Buddhism or an atheist, that person who is who is speaking on behalf of another God is the, is the equivalent of a person who's giving a false prophecy, someone who's speaking or claiming to speak for God, for the living God. And that person, as the Bible says, that person shall be should be put to death. That Now, we're not saying the same thing now. However, there is still a dire warning for that person as well. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says this, and what I am doing I will continue to do in order to undermine the claims of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. Now, what he's really saying is that there are people who claim to be Christian. There are people who claim that we're on the same side, that I'm a follower of Christ, and that isn't the case. And so Paul is trying to, and is going to continue to expose these people for, for who they are. And so why does Paul... Um, make this statement, he says, in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that they are on our side. He says, verse 13, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And he says, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, their end will correspond with their deeds. And so this is not a good prognostication for, the, for these people. They're going to be judged. They're going to be dealt with in due course. Now, the Bible tells us in Revelation 12, verse 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil, and Satan, who's, who's the deceiver of the world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, recall when he was thrown down, that serpent. Where do we hear that word before? Well, in the garden. What does... Uh, what does he what does he do? The first thing that he does is he tries to distort the word of God. Did God really say this? Well, here's what God really meant. And so you've got these people today following the same line of Satan doing the exact same thing. This is what the, the word of the Lord is. This is what God has said. That is Satan's chief trick. That's his that's his main go to his strategy. And we've got people today that are doing the exact same thing who are trying to tell us that God told them this God told them that and they're wrong. And then we've got people like this who would say that even though I've gotten them wrong, it's okay. I'll keep doing it. So when I get on YouTube, man, I get on here and tell what God said. When Camille and them get on YouTube, they get on there and say what God said. When Jalen get on YouTube, they say what God said. I'm going to tell you straight up. 
And I ain't probably try to justify myself. I have I have missed it a many times. But you know what? When I'm gonna keep on speaking until I get it right. <laughs> Talk God, I'm gonna keep speaking until I get it right. So no matter how many false prophecies I've given, no matter how many false prophecies about this wealth transfer, about this, about that, God told me this, God told me that I've been wrong here, I've been wrong there, I've been wrong everywhere. And what is his response? I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it until I get it right. I'm bound to get it right one day, and I can guarantee you this, that when he eventually does get one of his predictions right, not prophecies, but one of his predictions right, he is going to claim and tout that as proof that he is a prophet of God, that the word of the Lord was true. Forgetting the fact that for the last 10 that you've given, they've all been incorrect, vague and incorrect, and this finally you got one right, and so now we're supposed to assume that you are a false, a true prophet. Now, the problem isn't so much that they are false prophets, Jesus tells us they're going to come. Paul warns us and we're to be alert. The problem isn't what they're doing. The problem is the people who listen to them and give a pass to what they're doing. They'll say things like, who are you to judge this person? That person is a man of God. Let's stop dividing the Bible. That person is not part of the body. A liar, someone who lies against Christ, that is actually the definition of antichrist. That person is not part of the body. And the sad part is not that we have these people, the Bible tells us that they're going to come. The sad part is we've got people who say they're Christians, who we're going to have to start questioning their salvation, who do not value the word of God, but much more value the word of someone who is proven an admitted liar on God. They've used God to spread a lie, claimed it was God. Once it's wrong, I didn't quite hear it right. I'm not going to always get it right. Well, no, a prophet is going to be 100% accurate. He is going to be perfect in his um, uh, delivering the word. All he has to do is hear from God and then say exactly what he heard. They don't have to write it down. Just go and say exactly what he heard, when he heard it, and it's going to be precise and accurate. But these people are wrong. And the problem is we've got a mass of people who follow them who do not care that the word is wrong. So the promise is this, not from me, but from God. He says that they're in, that they're going to receive their deed. That is both the people who give these false prophecies and the people who follow after these false prophecies because God has stated that he has tested us to see if we're going to follow after these people and then both parties will be put to judgment. And so that's not from me, that's from God. So if you want a true word from the Lord, a real prophecy, listen to what the word of God, the written word has stated and follow. It would behoove you to heed his word versus theirs. Amen.